Towards the end of last year, I reviewed the RG351P and played this little beast pretty much every single day. However, recently, I've got my hands on an RG351M. But how does the RG351M compare to the RG351P? Hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, kick off your shoes and relax your socks because today we're going to review the RG351M. One of the first things you notice when you pick up an RG351M is that metallic body. Built out of aluminium, you can instantly notice the metal case when you pick it up. It's got a nice cold to the touch kind of feel as soon as you pick it up that warms along with your hands. But also it carries that slight extra weightiness you'd expect to come with metal. Instantly, this is one of the most striking and noticeable differences between the RG351M and the RG351P. Now, both these consoles have an absolutely fantastic build quality and both feel amazing to hold in your hand and play retro video games. The RG351P has such fantastic build quality that it was one of the highlighted features Features in the previous review that I did. However, when you pick up an RG351P after holding an RG351M, you can tell that it's made out of plastic and it has an almost hollow feel to it. Now, don't get me wrong, the build quality on the RG351P is fantastic and it's one of the highlighted features of the review that I did on it. But if we were to say that the build quality on an RG351P feels around about maybe 8 or 9 out of 10, then the RG351M easily hits a 10 out of 10. Now the possible downside to it having a metallic chassis is that it comes with a slight extra weightiness. And it's that extra weightiness that gives it that more premium feel, I believe. Now for me, that extra weightiness never ever was an issue. However, if you're somebody with small hands or you're somebody that doesn't enjoy having a weighty console or even like a weighty mobile phone, if you like your products to be lighter in your hand and in your pocket, then maybe the plastic chassis is more for you. However, if you're somebody that likes to feel like you've got a solid product in your hand and that extra weightiness really gives you that premium feel, then the RG351M definitely makes that difference. And the metallic chassis not only adds an extra premium feel, but the look of it is absolutely stunning. Now, when I first had the choice of picking my RG351P, I went for a black console because I felt that it had a more classy look. However, when I was sent the RG351M, I didn't get to pick the color of the console and the colors are either a silver or a metallic black. And I'm glad I didn't get to pick because I probably would have picked black, but the metallic gray isn't just a metallic gray. It has this kind of almost like iridescent or pearlescent look. And I'm gonna try and get some B-roll to capture that kind of look to it. But what I mean basically is that instantly, it just looks like a nice brushed aluminum gray. But then as you move the console ever so slightly to the light, you get these slight little hints of green and purple that kind of shine as you get the light on different angles. And this extra little touch is just another thing that makes the RG351M feel like such a premium and classy console. Let me put it this way. If James Bond played retro handheld video games, he would play them on an RG351M. Because with its suave, cold to the touch, almost gunmetal finish, this is the Walther PPK of retro handheld video game consoles. Now you might think I'm exaggerating or joking, but honestly, the metallic chassis really does make that much difference to how it feels. It really gives it a classy, almost like professional quality grade feeling and something that in all honesty, I don't think I've really ever felt in a console before. I've definitely not felt in a handheld console either. Most handheld consoles that I play, even from the big manufacturers, usually are made out of plastic. Game Boys, DS's, the Nintendo Switch, the PSP, some of them do have metallic parts to them, but for the most part, it's plastic. And with the RG351M, with the majority of the chassis being metal, the feel of it is distinctly different to anything I've ever felt before. Now, moving on from the externals, let's jump inside. And inside, this little thing is pretty much identical to the RG351P, with one distinct difference. This has a built-in Wi-Fi adapter. Now, in the RG351P review that I did, I did mention how that console console came with a bundled Wi-Fi adapter. And that was a really nice addition that I didn't think Ambenic had to include in the box and many other manufacturers wouldn't. They would just expect you to go out and buy additional dongles like a Wi-Fi adapter. But it turns out that the story is the original RG351P did come with a built-in Wi-Fi adapter, but that adapter interfered with the sound, so they took it out. Hence the workaround solution 
providing a plug-in dongle. But when designing the RG351M, Ambenix solved the issue, and they were able to include a Wi-Fi adapter in here without it interfering with the sound. Now, does the Wi-Fi adapter being inside the console as opposed to being a dongle that you plug in make a big difference? For me, it did. In all honesty, I didn't really use Wi-Fi on the RG351P at all because it was an extra step. It was an extra little thing for me to carry around. And if you're anything like me, I usually lose stuff like that. As a side anecdote, just yesterday I was playing on my Game Boy and I had Pokemon Yellow and Zelda. Pokemon Yellow was in the cart, Zelda was in my pocket. 10 minutes after, I lost Zelda. I like to stay minimalist, and when we're talking about handheld gaming and portable gaming, the fewer things you need to carry around with you, the better. So having the Wi-Fi adapter included in the RG351M really does make a difference for me. And it makes a difference to the actual functionality as well. One of my favorite things about the RG351 consoles is the menu. The menu is so smooth, user-friendly, and genuinely gorgeous to look at. And one of the things that makes it so great is all the artwork that goes along with the video games. However, when you install your own ROMs, that artwork doesn't exist unless you specifically put it in the correct place. When it came to the RG351P, I never bothered doing that, so the games and the ROMs that I'd added were just titles, they didn't have any artwork with them. However, those exact same games that I put on the RG351M, all I had to do was go straight into the scraper through the emulic menu and just set the scraper to automatically download that artwork. And after about 10-15 minutes, it had downloaded about 2,000 different items and completed the finished look for the menu, including all the extra games that I've added. On top of directly being able to access scraper sites and get all your artwork, the Wi-Fi also enables you to play multiplayer and to even watch TV. Now I'm not sure if the option to watch TV is solely used for Asian territories, or if that's something that's available worldwide. It's still something I'm looking into, and if I find a way to do it, then I will do another episode. So keep your eyes out for that one. Now, other than the Wi-Fi and the metallic chassis, the RG351M is pretty much identical to the RG351P. And in terms of playing video games and emulation, it is identical. Other than the Wi-Fi adapter, Ambenic didn't change any of the hardware. And the purpose wasn't to change the hardware, it was to upgrade the RG351P from a P plastic to an M metal. And to also find a solution to have the built-in Wi-Fi adapter. And that's exactly what they did. Now I can confirm that RG351M runs just as smoothly and wonderfully with all the games that I tested on the P as it does for the M. And if you want to find out all the other information about the RG351M, including a list of the emulators, video games included, and how well it emulates those video games, then go ahead and check out the RG351P video, which will be up here somewhere now or in a second, because that episode covers everything else about this console. But now let's get down to the deciding factor. The RG351M comes with a couple of extra features over the RG351P. However, those extra features come at an extra cost, around about 10 to 20 pounds or dollars, depending on where you can find the console. Do those extra features justify the extra cost? Now, first things first, that answer has kind of two options, I think. Do you already own an RG351P? If you already own an RG351P, then I would not say upgrading to the RG351M is really worth it. Unless you really want that metallic chassis or you really want the Wi-Fi adapter to be built in, you're pretty much getting the exact same emulation experience that you're getting on the RG351P. However, if you do not already own an RG351P, then the RG351M is the definitive version of this console. And in my previous review, I did say the RG351P was the best handheld emulator that I'd come across. So this makes this the new best. Like I say, for an extra 10 or $20, you're getting a glorious, and I mean luxurious metallic chassis, and you're getting a Wi-Fi dongle built in. The gorgeous look of the metal and the feel of it in your hand is genuinely worth that extra, in my opinion. Honestly, it's hard to describe just how different a metallic console feels if you've not tried one. On paper, I wouldn't have said they made that much of a difference, but having tried both side by side, I really, really do love the RG351M, and this is my go-to. Every time I pick this thing up, it feels like something special. It feels like a quality piece of kit. It feels like something professional and premium. It feels like in my hands, I have the best piece of hardware to enjoy those 
retro emulated video games. And although my reference to James Bond picking an RG351M earlier might have been a little bit jokey, it's the best way I can describe as to how this feels. Now the only reason I would think somebody wouldn't consider the RG351M is if they want to have a lighter console. If they want to have a console that in their pocket feels like nothing's there. However, for some people that's more of a personal preference. As for everything else when it comes to pocketability, these two consoles are absolutely identical in size and shape. So unlike a classic Game Boy, you can fit these in your pocket absolutely no problem. Now the RG351M is currently my favourite retro emulation handheld console. However, I'm on a bit of a mission now. I want to find what is the best, the definitive way to play retro emulation handheld games. In previous episodes, I've had different opinions ranging from mobile phone all the way over to the RG351P and now the RG351M. And in future episodes, I will be covering a lot more options. So if you want to find out how that goes and you want to follow me on that journey, then hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future episodes. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time. If you want to show your support for Chronic Spartan games, then you can head on over to chronicspartan.com and check out our indie games. You can become a Chronic Spartan patron at patreon.com, or you can kick off your shoes and relax your socks with some Chronic Spartan merch from tpublic.com. All links are in the description below. But the simplest and easiest way to show your support is to just hit that subscribe button. Thank you for tuning in.